sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out. And it's Monday. It's Monday. <coughs> is it really? It is absolutely, definitely for certain, because I checked. It's it's Monday. It would be the 10th of February. That's the day after the 9th, you know. Four days before Valentine's Day. We don't do Valentine's Day here. Oh, do we not? No. Oh. We went anniversary on the 12th. Is it? Yes. No, Which I is why I've been that. away at the weekend. Celebrate my wedding anniversary because going on a wedding day is not a good idea. Right. So we've been having a romantic tryst, my wife and I, in in a vape friendly hotel in Harrogate, no With less. a bottle of Merlot. Oh, a bottle of Merlot, yes, absolutely right. And bottle a majestic of staircase. And a very majestic staircase. And a Spanish waiter, um, well, a Spanish oh, barman actually, who was that. well, well interested in the e cigs he was. Oh, right. Oh, yes. So they had smoking lounges, is that what you mean? Yeah. No, you we're in, in the UK, you can't smoke indoors in the UK. Or apparently in a bloody car now, if there's kids in. But I thought you were saying that there were smoking rooms. Oh, they're the bedrooms. Right. That's still allowed, but not in public rooms. Bedroom, apparently, is a place where somebody lives. Yes. It's your residence for the time that you're there. So they, have, they had some smoking bedrooms. But in the public areas, no smoking. But you can use your e to your heart's content. But some of the Spanish hotels have smoking lounges. Yes, but they're in Spain. They're not in England. Yes, I realise. Harrogate's in England. Is it? Oh, it is. Well, yes, I you, well, could you'd have never, told you that. Actually, you'd never think it. You'd, there I say, it's everything, everything marvellous. Is there anybody in from Harrogate? <coughs> anybody Will in you two shut up and get on with the show? Sorry? <laughs> oh. Some heck. You hear about women. Who? Jesus. You two. Well, that's us told. Well, that's right. right. We're going to be late. <laughs> Better Shall be serious. Uh, well, Aye. I am serious. Aye. I'm ser you are that. serious and educational. You've obviously never been to Harrogate, Chris. Yes, I have. And taken advantage of the spa, the waters. Absolutely not. <laughs> I've got enough problems with me waters without going there. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Okay. <coughs> Shall we do a show about e -cigs? Yes. Okay. We'll move on from Harry Getty. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and welcome to one, two, three. <laughs> the the Hairs Hour. hour. <laughs> We're back. We're on air. Hello. Good evening. Tonight, tonight is a mishmash. Mish, ma, it, it, there's all kinds happening tonight. I was challenged last week to look at the Tin Man coil. So tonight, live, we'll be recre recreating the Tin Man coil that's currently sitting on there. Look, I'll give it a little posh. Little posh. There you go. That's a Tin Man. And if you want to know how much. That puts away, puts a lot away because I put one in the Kraken as well. So we'll be doing that. You're not doing it this week. It's all right. I broke me Kraken, dude. You've what? I cracked me Kraken. How have you cracked your Kraken, kiddo? I don't know how I did it. But I can't get it all back together now. It's all in bits, the nurse. Well, that's it, no good, hell. You'll have to show her. Is the, is the glass cracked or has it just come off? It's crumbled and cracked. New glass required. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, that'll, no, that'll, ouch. And then this bit stuck on me. Stuck on? But you know you know what I'm like, I can't get the bloody thing off. 
Right. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. I shall have to. Uh, I shall have to enlist the use of the car and get up to your end. We can have a day of uh, tools. When are people going to make things that are user friendly for people that haven't got complete and absolute first class dexterity? Eh? Go when on. are you going to do that? Show them the other two. <coughs> Which other two? The new ones? Aye, the ones you were whinging on about earlier on today. Cause There's this that one. Oh, you've got so it. I've got in the VTR at the moment. You've got it running now, have you? Well, it does and it doesn't. Right. So I need some advice, folks in chat there, on the Kfun GS. There you go. Kfun GS. Hang even on know a what minute, because you didn't get instructions with these things. No. You, know? you don't. So there's that one, and the other one got the heat four. Did it? I found it. Well, you know what I'm like. And that's this one, which is the Aqua. And again, I'm a bit lost on that. Okay. I want to have a look so at that. So there we go. And there's a drip all ready to come dripping out there. Oh, dear me. You and you, you, you do not leak out your bottom stone. Hey, I do not. I tell you, I have an awful lot of water problems. Yes. And there's a little pool underneath me spheroid. Look at that. I don't you talk I, about taking the waters. Yes, indeed. Uh, Gillis has said bet they were over tightened. Not for me, because I kind of tighten out. She doesn't cut, doesn't over tighten anything. That's the key. It's the dripping, isn't it? I often drip I all over the grip. kitchen benches. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yes. Oh, I had to see a doctor about that case. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were that tall. Well. <laughs> <laughs> God. And I must show you this thing. What you got? <laughs> it's me little cat. Drip oh tip. God, a Hello Kitty drip tip. Uh huh. Dear I had me. to get one of them. Oh. <laughs> and it creates such a vacuum, the juice comes shooting out the top. Oh my God. We'll have to have one of those. Indeed. Might <laughs> <laughs> okay. solve your problem, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm going to be quiet. Dear viewer, <laughs> have you ever had the feeling that you've lost control of what you were doing? Yes, but probably your wife isn't like mine with sort of brown stains all over the kitchen <laughs> surfaces. <laughs> so, do you want to come again? Brown stains uh -huh. all over the kitchen surfaces where I've put an e-cig down and maybe, you know, it's leaked. All right, I'm pleased you explained that because I was beginning to have visions of... Hence the bread bin. The bread the bin? The only thing, Keith... What's that? I can suggest is if an e-cig leaks, you don't really need to worry about it staining because it never dries. That's true. Well, no, uh, I, w I would agree with you, but my wife wouldn't. Oh, well, we'll have to descend. So Me what, what's all this about the Brabantia then? Well, I was getting wrong, you see, because I, I had gear lying all over the place on the kitchen benches, etc., etc. And um, I found an abandoned bread bin <laughs> with, <laughs> with a roll top lid, which appeared to be surplus to requirements. Right. So I was raking around, got all my gear out of kitchen drawers and other places, and I put it in this bread bin. And I put the bread bin in the garage. Right. So that if I want juice or, uh, you know, anything, I just go into the garage and uh, get it out of the bread bin. So everything's in one place. So I can't get into trouble. Oh, <laughs> you see, many a married man has said those words and has been proved wrong. We can always get into trouble, Keith. That's I mean, why we have one. I mean, I don't have to go outside, so there's, you know, the kitchens. Yes, uh, straight into, into the, into I'm, the garage. I'm, I'm intrigued by the notion of an abandoned bread bin. Uh, yeah. Where was well, it abandoned at? In the garage. Oh. Mm. And I thought, ah, oh, I'll use that. Obviously, it wasn't suitable for bread. Obviously not. Although Pete Dermody in chat has just said, until Mrs Keith 
buys Mrs. bread tomorrow and can't find the bread bin. Well, yes, she might change her mind and decide to use it. Yeah, you definitely And then I'm back get... to square one. Yes, yes, I know that feeling. But it's a good, if you want a storage place with everything in one place. A Brabantia bread bin. Is that how you pronounce it? Brabantia. Bra uh, right. Brabantia. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. A bunch of bread bin EC storage units. Have you screwed it to the wall? No. Uh -huh. Mr. Rednecks just said that of husbands, are you awake? If so, you're probably in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Although I have to say I haven't been this weekend. I haven't been in trouble at all. I've been a good lad. Wore a suit and everything. It's dead good. Well, what? somebody has a glass fronted cabinet. Really? That's just posh. They must live in Harrogate. <laughs> the most, yes. They must live in Harrogate. Talking about posh people that live in other places, you, you might be aware of a bloke called Cliffy. Cliffy's in Australia. He might even be watching. But before he went, he sent a couple of bits and bobs for me to have a look at because they did not work for him, he said. Going to close you up, he can't. And this here is the thing in question. Now, it's a booty kick. Do we need to explain booty, Chris? Booty. Booty. A booty is something that isn't genuine. Yes. So this is a, a cloned kick that he bought from uh, the Chinese store. And he said it didn't work. So what I did was, he said, zooming out ever so slightly, was I got this beastie here and I decided to give it a try. Cliffy, if you're watching, when you get back, I'll get them back to you. That little... Zoom in again, David. Nice and close. You'll see there's a little nub in there. Just there. Your little focus. That is the negative terminal. And you need to have that bit contacting the wall of whatever you're putting it in. Now it is vitally important that it does contact and makes good contact because if it doesn't, it will it work. So you slide that in first, keeping it level. I'm trying to do this on camera and failing miserably. And then screw the whole device together. And I think I might be zoomed in just a tad too far. So I'll zoom out just a touch. That's better. Have you got to switch anything on first? No, on this? no you don't. You'll see yeah. on the on the top there's that blue the blue box with an X in. Yes. Well that's where you change the voltage or the actually the, the wattage. Just with a screwdriver and you twist it. One way okay. or the other. Right. I'll turn it up for might as well. Then make sure it's square on and I'll put the top of the device on and we shall see whether or not it actually works. Does. And it does. Both of them, in fact, the cliffy left, do work. But you've got to have a really, really good contact with that negative side. And you've also got to make sure that your battery contact and everything going right up is firm and secure. The same applies to every kick I like, every kick that's ever been made. You've got to get that negative contact, making really good contact, contact with the wall of your device. If you do right. that, it will work. So Cliffy, both of yours work and shall be returned to you on your return from Australia if they ever let you back out. By the way, while you're over there, if you see Simon Chapman, kick him in the balls for me. Thank you very much. One kick deserves another. <laughs> exactly, well, it was while we were talking about kicks. Absolutely. Now then. Yes, and Famargo has said, make sure you put your battery in the right way as well, otherwise, poof. It doesn't have reverse polarity protection, apparently, the matey, matey believe one, the booty one. So there you go. Um, if you've never used a kick, if you've never used a wattage control device, I would say you don't know what you're missing. That said, it's for a very simple reason, and that reason is because I do, these days, a lot of winding of my own coils, don't you know? Yes. And that, of course, is going to come up in the second half. But this winding of your own coil is, a, is a, a lovely way to go about things, I think, at any rate. And for some reason, which I do not understand, everything's going out of kilter on that particular camera now. 
come into focus, you swine. It was focus lovely before. I must be too close. I don't know. No try. Anyway. Right, where were we? What was we going to do now? Oh, yes, Friday. A um, couple of things, really. It's kind of housekeeping, if you like. There are still places, I believe, available on Nicky Sinclair's bus trip to Brussels. Uh, which takes place on March the 5th and 6th, isn't it, uh, Chris? I don't even know, I'm busy kicking. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, it takes place then, whenever, uh, March 5th and 6th. And one or two people um, could still be going. There are places available, do get in touch. One, one or two people did say that they weren't sure what the point was going to be, given that the vote is coming up on the 26th, 22nd, 26th of this month um, in plenary. Fact of the matter is, if everything goes the wrong way, then we need to start pressing for new legislation to be sorted out. So it's definitely worth going. If you can get the time off, please get hold of Nicky Sinclair and get yourself booked in. I know there are some places left and I would love to see that bus absolutely jam-packed, full of vapours going over to Brussels. It's well worth doing and it's going to cost you next to note. So give it a go. Do give it a go. Um, that was the first thing. Second thing, on Friday, Keith and I went to see our MP, didn't we? Yes. What did you make of her? Uh, very pleasant, uh, not in any way prejudiced or biased, uh, had an open mind. Um, I was quite impressed with her. I was, I've got to admit. Um, for a I mean, she's 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 a a young lady. Yes, surprisingly young. Um, yes. Well, even coppers are looking young to me now. But she, what she said was, and she's Labour, by the way, Bridget Phillipson's her name. She did tell us that a lot of constituents have been in touch about e-cigs and about how they don't like the way things are going. Uh, she's promised to take it up again and ask more questions for us in Parliament. This was, we couldn't have expected a better outcome. Um, and we're looking for a store in her constituency, a, a bricks and mortar store to take her to so she can see what goes on and get a full variety of stuff. And yes, we did. We took everything. Generation 2, Generation 3. I didn't take any Generation 1 because I just don't like exposing people to those. But it's well worth doing, isn't it? Oh, it was a, a well worth doing exercise. Yes, and we had a marvellous conversation with a few people while we were there. We did, all good. yeah. Including, yes, we'll not go into the <laughs> no, bloke, no. No, no. But lived in Brussels for a couple <coughs> of years. It's weird over there. It is very, very weird over there. Chris, what are you doing? What am I doing? I'm trying to find a tube that I can fit this kick in. Oh. Try GG. you just GG. I can it. Why? Because I've got a broken doofa stuck on it. Oh, right. I didn't realise it was the just GG that the broken <laughs> doofa was on. Yeah, because unfortunately, this I, I have a major problem with this. If something is a uh, your righty tighty lefty loosey, uh -huh. and you put a device on that's also righty tighty lefty loosey, when you come to take that device off, the whole top comes off. Yes. And with the GG especially. Ah. See? Well, now. And you I can, can't you can unscrew separate that, them. If you unscrew that centre post while you've got the top off, Chris, then you might right. find it easier to get it out because it won't be uh, galling on the on the middle post. Right, okay. I'll have a look at that. And Disco Des has said, use a rubber glove. I've got a bloody <laughs> pain, it doesn't help. <laughs> you just seem to be having a whole series of negative experiences, Chris. What do you mean, just seem to? <laughs> Half of the last five years. What? <laughs> not not it's for a nothing. story in my life. Not for nothing. No, but you're normally so positive. Uh, oh, I'm positive. <laughs> oh, look it. Rubber bloody gloves. <laughs> Didn't talk to me about rubber gloves. <laughs> she's, she's positive. She's positive Nautil gun, right? Well, use I've, surgical gloves instead. I've got them as well, and they end up with a bloody big hole in. Oh, right. Which is the other way around, the way surgical gloves and usually I mean, end up. In a bloody big hole. hands just <laughs> slipping round with a rubber glove. It's not gripping, is it not, Chris? Oh. I've got a box full of surgical gloves, if you've got... Have you got no, small you hands? you are right, I've got a couple of boxes. All right. I, 
got from the vet. Um, I, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> hang on a minute, I'm just a little bit worried and wondering why you've got boxes of surgical gloves, Keith. What, well, what? They're, they're handy for all sorts of things. On which, on which <laughs> note, I'm taking the adverts. <laughs> taking the adverts, we'll talk about coils when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Super6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out Right. While, while we were away <laughs> doing the adverts, we've discovered that Keith has a lot that he puts on his organ so that he can see, see, see the pedals. Uh, uh, well, I'm just trying to help Chris under her desk. <laughs> she says she can't find things. <laughs> <laughs> just a thought. Just the thought. Did you get your doofer off then, Chris? I got my doofer off. <laughs> but I had to use the needle nose pliers. Okay. And I can, I'm now stuck in the rubber gloves, but never mind. Oh. Uh. <laughs> right, let's, well, the, let's talk about... The surgical gloves would help our dis, uh, dexterity. Oh. Uh. I've still got the problem of getting that little doofer in. Uh -huh. Yes, quite. Gentle viewer, what? <laughs> have you ever had the feeling that you've completely lost control of what you were trying to do? <laughs> to do? Um. Make your hands sweat, don't you? Uh. <laughs> so how do you get the little doofer in then? What little doofer? The little doofer that you were saying was so important. Right. The, which end are you putting it in? F oh God! Which end are you putting it in from, Chris? Which end are you putting it in from? If you try and put it in down where the threads are, it'll catch on the threads. You need to put it on an unthreaded, internally unthreaded part. Well, it was. She clearly needs personal assistance, doesn't she? It could You'll well have be. To. It could well be. Have you have you managed? No. You, you, need, it. you need to push it in slightly with your finger. <laughs> I can it. Let me try a pair of tweezers. <coughs> you, you just... Um, 
Didn't I've, say any more. Only a bloody coil. Just right, I'll get on with the coils while you try and get it fingered in. That's got to be the easiest way. Here we go. Right, right. look. The, I've completely lost this, you know that, don't you? <laughs> Have you? Yes, totally. I'm sure you'll find it. My, my mind got has... It in. I got it in! Supposed to go down further than that, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> huh? the, the chat's not helping. <laughs> Chat is not helping, Chris. Have you managed to get it in now? There, I've got it in, and it, it's right. You it's... need, you need to. Oh God, this is going to get even worse. You need to make the tube slightly longer, otherwise you'll not get the top on. Okay. This is bordering on the pornographic, isn't it? It's what... No. But it's all useful. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Now, what can I put in it? A dicky squib? Yeah, try a squib. Why not? Or a dicky Watson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have you got sufficient light, Chris? That lamp behind you. Have I got no. sufficient light? I'm blind as a bat, and he asks me if I've got sufficient light. <laughs> there's, there's no such... Does it make any difference? There's no such thing as sufficient light for Chris. While you were searching for something, I'll start on this tin man, shall I, Chris? I think it might, might be a good idea. Probably as well to do that. that. Right. Let's... I'm going to try and, 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 and demo this if I can first. This is, this is it, right? This is... Oh, come on, thing, focus, will you, for God's sake. Right, there we go. There is the Tin Man on the squip, and it bats it out, as you can plainly see. That is whacking it out, absolutely whacking it out. And if I go to an other cam, don't know which one, try that one. Oh, you can't really see how much vapour it's put out, but it's doing it a lot. So, how do you do this Tin Man thing? Well, let me clean this off, get into close you up you can, and you use this, it's flat canthal wire. Now this is um, 0 0.65 by 0 0.19. It's tiny weeny. I don't know whether you can see. It's very, very thin. Very, very thin. And what I've been winding it on is a white hypodermic needle. That's what I'm using. And I've got it this close up because there are things you need to see. You'll also notice that I'm going from the bobbin end, all right, which has got my little hair bobble on it, which I no longer need, to keep everything in place. And the idea is that you catch each coil over the next one. So you overlap all the way. If you can see how that's working, I hope you can. Yep. I'm going to try and get that to focus a little better if I can. I don't know why it won't. Right. I don't know whether that's just not focusing in at all well, is it, Chris? It looks fine. Uh, it's a bit fuzzy here. But the idea. Yeah. The idea. It, uh, no, that's fine, Dave, honestly. It's. The loud camera's moved, hang on. Right, I can see why you're getting the fuzzy because it's quite a long delay. Yeah, two six. Right, now let's try. Are we in in lane? This is not easy to do at all. Especially not at this distance when you can't see what you're doing. And it, I need to be close in though. Right, there we are. All right. Okay, but we go to close you up you can. And as you as you might be able to see, each coil oh, that's better. overlaps the one that went before. And you've got to keep this wire tight. That's 
why I'm using my finger. And you overlap all the way through. Now I'm putting nine turns on here. This is to go on the scrape. And you will be able to see, I hope, I'm going to try a, a, a mega zoom. That's the last turn going on. So I'm going to try and zoom right in to see if you can actually make it out. There you go. Each turn is overlapped onto the one ahead. And you can snug them down so that you've got the perfect concertina. Okay, that's what they should look like. Mm -hmm. Now that first coil on there, you'll actually waste. Mm -hmm. But that's how it should look, as best as I can and get it. So, we'll just lay that to one side. And then start with the scrape itself. And this is not going to be easy either. Alrighty, so I'll take off the one that was on the scrape and go from there. You should be able to see what's going on, I think. There it is, in picture now. I do apologise for being all fingers and thumbs, ladies and gentlemen. So, right, let's take this one off and I'll show you how I put it on and then how it wicks. And it doesn't use a lot of cotton, doesn't this? But my god, it works well. So, the idea is to use the hypodermic. So you take the, the wire around and then under the hypodermic and then press the hypodermic down and that traps the wire while you then fasten the screw and that gives it a good hold and then the same on the other side go over round under the hypodermic so that the hypodermic itself puts pressure on the wire and that also keeps your coil up over so that there's much much Get back in view, you damn stupid thing. There we go. So there's much, much less chance of any drippage and floodage of the kind that Cat's been experiencing. So again, tighten that down. And you've then got your two ends nicely done. Now you can just tidy up if you wish then, that point. But you can see from that close-up how overlapped those wires are. And then, of course, we need to remove the height ore, which by this time will be quite tight. And there it is out. And then, snippage is quite simple. Because you've got that wire in that groove, like that. So it's dead easy to find it and snip it like so and so to actually coiling it up now I'm going to use cotton in here and again I still haven't got one of those clever things that Chris has for dragging bits of cotton through so it's just two bits of uh, it's just a bit of wire turned into a U and then it only takes one strand doubled through here that's all you need and I still can't see what I'm doing. So I use a screwdriver to open the hole a bit. Chat can see what they like. I don't care. Alrighty. And then you can pull that through. You probably want to just use a fingernail or something to stop the... And that's it. It's that actually that simple. So then, it's just a case of, on the scrape, cutting off level with the end, and the same on the other side. Now I've left out the whole heat process. You can do that if you so desire, 
but I wanted to show you how the build comes together. And that pretty much is how it happens, as you can see. So I'll just gob a bit of juice on it, then we'll get it on a device. And you just want to make sure that it's got a good lump of juice on before you put it back in the scrape. And what I tend to do, again, is just finesse the cotton into the little channels. And that's it. That's as much as you need. That's all she wrote. It's that easy. Back to number one cam. And let's stick it onto a device. That was really clever stuff. It's mm. relatively simple to do. The hard part, mm. Keith, is keeping that ribbon from kinking. Uh, let's have a look. And nine turns. This will be interesting. There we go. Nine turns of showing. 1.8 ohms. And I've got it set for 12.6 watts. Let's put it in view. And fire. <coughs> and that works. Absolutely delightful. <coughs> so let's clag it back onto the scrape properly. Put it all back together. As you do. And give it a blast, shall we? See whether it produces. I can hear you clattering <coughs> going on, Chris. What are you doing? I've got my scrape on me, me doofer. Uh -huh. Right. Are you ready for this? Well. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, okay. Have a blast of that. This uh, kick thing's working. Is it? Aye. Is it working nicely? Aye. It's definitely working better. You've seen the size of the drip tip? Uh-huh. God, huge, that's uh, certainly producing. Yes. Um, for the sake of completeness, I did a cracking earlier. I, wonder if I, can I get don't it. wish to know about things like that. Like what? Ah, oh, cracking! What do Sorry, you think I said? <laughs> oh, God. Let's just drop into that. There's there's the cracking done in mega close up. Usual way, the coil, the uh, wick goes in two directions, and this absolutely bats it out. Slightly wider. Um, and if we go back to numero uno cam, I shall have a chuck. Still, we can make a bitch. Mm. This really whacks it out. See, that's quite effortless. Yes. <coughs> um, as 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 a technology goes, I'm loving this cotton more and more. But that's just two. It's just one strand doubled into that. It's lovely. What have you got in that? That's um, that's caramel, just straightforward caramel. There was a, yeah. Hmm. That works nicely. Tell you what, we'll take a short break, and when we come back. We'll be talking about a few other bits and bobs as well. Um, 
There's adapters for the uh, Linear Hydrid. Hydra. I will keep saying Hydrid. Hydra that have come through. And I've got a few thoughts on clones. We'll discuss that in a couple of minutes. See you then. And we're back in the room with Keith. That's Kat, the only way you can yourself. describe that area. Airy, yeah. Well, I've been I've, I've been watching Rip Tripper and various others with various different coils. There was a guy, somebody linked me up to um, an Asian Oriental chap showing a new mod, <coughs> which everybody thought I would like, based on a twenty six sixty, uh, and it's a dripping mod, and he was absolutely whacking so much vapor out you couldn't believe. And then I watched, and there was no mouth inhale and then exhale. It was a lung inhale. So I've set this up really airy to do a lung inhale. I wanted to see what it was about. And I found with this set really airy, with this particular juice that I'm using, um, which is a new one to me, and I'll tell you all about it another time. They're just sorting packaging out at the minute, so I can't feature it at the moment. Um, with this glycerin based juice it really on a lung inhale you can bat it out as i will attempt yes i will attempt to show Mm. That's a fair old chuck. If I do it into camera two, which is the usual demo camera. Hello, camera two. Oh, you can, by God almighty. The one thing I have discovered, you can't do it with anything more than 24. I can't anyway. Right. It really does get it into you. Uh, for me, for Margot said, DD can always apply for a job as a fog machine. It's amazing what you can do. <laughs> there you go. The smog monster. The smog monster. That's exactly right. <laughs> Which brings me on to clones because that is a cloned Kraken. I have, the, I have the original, which is on here, on a kicked, G, uh, no, this is not kicked, this has got the, um, uh -huh, the other the one on. Zorbus, the Zorbus, yes, I've got the Zorbus on the, on the, uh, on the real kick, on the, on the real Kraken. Um, and I've got to say, here are my thoughts on it. And I wanted to, I wanted to do this because I know there are clone wars going on all over the place. Well, I want to take you back to 19, 
1959 when the first Fender Stratocaster copy came out. And Fender got at them and took them to court and said you can't do that. It looked to all intents and purposes like a Fender Stratocaster. What, where it differed were in a few minor measurements so the radiuses were slightly different. The pickups were slightly different. Obviously they were way cheaper because it was a, a copy made elsewhere. I'm not going to, well, it was in China. And the way things stand now, everywhere you go, you can either buy a Fender Stratocaster or you can buy what looks like a Fender Stratocaster, but everybody knows it isn't. And I want to make a plea. If you're watching in China, please bear this in mind. It's one thing to take inspiration very closely from a design that you've seen. It is something entirely different to call it what you've copied. That is where it all goes wrong. So if, if you're doing that, if you're a vendor bringing them in, please, 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 don't call that that's on here a Kraken. It isn't a Kraken. Call it something different. It's, it's a Kraken clone, give it another name. And the people in China that are turning it out, take the name off. Call it something else. That way, there can be no problem. That way everybody knows what's the original and what's not. And I've been asked which do I prefer, the original Kraken or the copy? Well I'll tell you now, and this is, this is absolutely right, I can chuck my original Kraken all over the place and I know for a certain fact if I lift it up by the, uh, the, 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 the cowl it'll not come off. But if I try and lift this one up by the cowl God, it just it. drops straight off. It's not built to the same standard. Right? It works, but it's not a Kraken. This is a Kraken, and it works as it should do. It's the real I am. Um, I've got the two of them to compare them, and I've done exactly the same with the K-Fun Lite. Now, the, the copy K-Fun Lite, the clone K-Fun Lite that I've got, isn't a true clone of the K-Fun Lite. It's close, but it's not the same. And the same applies to the K-Phone 3.1. It's not the same. And they shouldn't be called K-Phones either. And that needs sorting out. I just I wanted to, to go through that because it, it, it does annoy me when there are straight rip-offs that are called the same thing. We did exactly the same with the Cobra. Do you remember that, Chris? Oh, there was one was even bo Even boxed up the same. And I'm sorry it wasn't even close. And I'm, I'm fairly... Yeah, somebody said Kacken. Midge Dog said Kacken. Um, I mean, this one's a T phone. I don't know if that's a genuine thing or not. Somebody did say they thought one of mine was a T phone. But is it is that a real T phone or did it come from China? I have no idea. I have no idea if, if there is such a thing. There's far too many these days to keep track of them all, isn't there? Yes. Uh, Lamentals just said in chat that unfortunately the Chinese don't give a what's it about copyright trademarks etc. No. I agree though, he says, people are often referring to their clones as the real thing. Let me, let me tell you straight up, that's a clone of the, um, the k phone 3.1. There are all kinds of rumours floating around about them but that as far as I'm concerned is a clone it's not the same as the real thing I have played with the real thing I would like the real thing because the real thing doesn't leak the way this one does this will leak for a little while until I give it a little blow and then it sorts it out I've not had that problem with it with a, a real honest to goodness care phone um, but yes you will never ever hear me refer to that as a care phone I'll always tell you it's a care phone clone just so that you know and I, I, I like to get my hands on all these different things and try them out so that people know what's what. Like I say, um, if you're selling them in the UK, there's no wrong with that as far as I'm concerned, as long as you don't call them what the original was called. The same as I can go and buy a telly. As long as it's not called a telecaster, if it's a copy, that's fine. I mean, my telecaster is a Fender. My Stratocaster <coughs> is a Fender. My Paul Reed Smith is a Paul Reed Smith. I don't have any of the copies of the guitars. Um, and I would prefer, in truth, not to have any of the copies of the, of the, uh, the atomizers and tanks 
when they've got the same name. Any rant well, over. I mean, that, that, that applies to many products, doesn't it? Well, it yeah, does. I was I was just going to say, Keith, I, I've, I've got a problem with this. That um, years, years ago, I bought a television and it was a Hitachi. Yes. And I paid twice the price of what a Ferguson or anything like that would be. It was excellent quality. I then bought a um, hi-fi system, Hitachi, brilliant stuff. Then Hitachi sold the right to use, for other manufacturers to use that name and so did Toshiba and quite a few others. So nowadays I have to look at a product and say, I don't know if that is a Hitachi or they've just paid to use the name. Mm, right. <coughs> I must confess, I haven't realised that. It, it's called, it's a licensing deal. And as somebody's pointed out, Tokai uh, Tok Tok make lots and lots of, of look-alike guitars, but none of them have Fender or Stratocaster on the, on the, the headstock. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't adopt the same serial numbers or anything like that. Um, they're not actually breaking copyright laws by making the clones. That's, that's another question that's been asked in chat as long as there are differences and they're not called the same otherwise it's what's known as passing off so this one which is the um, the the, the Kfun 3.1 clone actually has on it and I can show you this on close you up you can if I can get it in the right place which of course can we see it or not Come on, David, get it right. Got to be miles away. There you go. You should be able to see that. That now, it says Svermesto on it. Now that, that just shouldn't be there. It's, it's unnecessary, not isn't it's it? No, there's no need for it. There's absolutely no need for it. They could call it anything. A gay fun, tray fun, gay jolly. Jolly. You can call it anything you wanted as long as it's not Kfun 3.1. Otherwise it's passing off and that is wrong. If the buyer is made aware that it's not the real thing when they're buying it and that anything on it is cosmetic then that's fine but seriously they need to get that stopped. Um, Mark I don't Shaw, know how, I mean when BMW took them to court this you know, and they've got a lot of money behind them. They couldn't get anywhere with the Chinese at all. Mark Shaw says he can't sell jeans marked up as Levi's, as copied Levi's, and that's perfectly true. You can't. So, in fact, yes, the fact that that's marked up as beans for Mesto probably makes it counterfeit and therefore under UK law illegal to sell. Obviously, that mm -hmm. law doesn't apply in China. I really do not like the whole notion of counterfeiting. It goes against the grain for me. In the guitar world, in the, in the music world, they've got past it. It's time we did the same with AC. I, I, I do feel quite strongly about that. I understand I mean, why it's there. I just don't like it. Go on, Chris. Sorry. This is a Chi Yu clone, right? And they've gone through the process of doing the etching of the design. Now, if anything, it's inferior. It doesn't look very nice. Leave it alone. Just leave it blank. Mm. I don't want to see that. You know, they've done exactly the same at the back. And the Caravella clone, which I also have, the Caravella was stunning because of the laser etching. The Chinese version is not. Yes. It's not. Sprott, <coughs> Sprott is asking a question here. He says, DD, are some of the clones unfinished products sold to other vendors? There are all kinds of rumours floating about, and quite honestly, without actually going to the factory and seeing what happens, I don't think anybody knows. Um, DJ Reptile UK said, unless a lot of people get taken to court, they'll always call them and label them like the originals. The name will get them more sales. It's not right, but it won't stop because most mod makers cannot afford the court fees. Yes. Well, you often wonder it's about these guys that wander around uh, the Canary Islands in oh, particular, look, look selling the Rolex watches. Yeah, well, patently they're not. And, uh, well, obviously. Uh, and and <coughs> everybody knows that they're fake Rolex, but actually, if you, if you get stopped with a fake Rolex coming back, customs will take it off you. Right. Because they're, right. they're, made, they're made to look 
and they do look very, very mm. much like yeah, a Rolex, they do, yeah. but they don't feel like one and they don't work like one. Yes, Dream Thief says trading standards should be seizing them if they are counterfeit. Yeah. They would if they came up for sale in the UK, but the trouble is we're buying them from China. And Leanna Lawless has said she'd only buy clones from China. Or I don't know what the emphasis of that is. Um, but yes, <coughs> and Sav has said she's seeing clones of clones mm. now and that hurts her head. Yeah, clones I mean, you, but it is true. It's all right. But what I find <coughs> amazing, Dave, is, is the companies that produce them <coughs> are now household names. Yes. You know, and, and we're not talking the likes of Fast Tech or, or Deal Extreme or any of those. They don't produce them. They buy them in. And the companies who make them are quite proud of their names being pushed around. Yes. I just find it totally amazing. <laughs> well, there's a question. Whip it up 69 has said, isn't the KFL Plus a clone of one of the Russians? And I've got to be honest, I don't know, I'm, conf I'm as confused as anybody when it comes like this. Um, it, it, it's, I think it's unfair to counterfeit. I think it's fine to take inspiration from. There are so many kids have started playing guitar on Fender copies, if you like, Stratocaster lookalikes. And there are, there are other really good guitars that have been developed out of those Stratocaster lookalikes and, and companies that have gone very very big making really really good now original guitars um ibanez is one of them that started copying all of the fender stuff and now produces their own originals and i would hope that that's what would see from all of these clone arrangers um but yes um i, I just hate the idea of a, of a cloned kraken being sold as a kraken it needs another name and if if any uk vendors are selling them then they need to change the names grind the bloody thing off there you go. That's interesting. Dice and, and cyclone vacuums. Well, yeah, everybody, yes. everybody's doing <coughs> these cyclone things now. And, and apparently uh, Mr. Dyson himself is not very happy. And, more to the point, he's even less than happy when somebody calls a Dyson vacuum a hoover. Ah, uh, well, well you'd have to live with that uh, one. Uh, Yes, I mean, everybody calls them hoovers, don't they? Well, yes, that's, that's, <coughs> that's right, they do. And I've managed to press all the wrong buttons there. But, yes. I'm not sorry, mind. Because in Mr. Dyson's case, it has helped the consumer because he now is, well, for example, I've got a, a Dyson here. I've used Dyson's for years, as you know, and it was buggered. And I phoned them up and I said, um, I need someone to come out and service this Dyson. When did you buy it? I can't remember. What's the serial number? So I gave them the serial number and they said, right, what, what's the problem with it? Oh, well, the, the, this thing at the bottom's not, the thing isn't rotating, the brush isn't rotating. We'll send you out an entire new unit. And I said, well, I just wanted a service. And they said, no, no, that particular model is uh, less than five years old. Therefore, it'll be free of charge. And I thought, now I know this is a good reason to buy a Dyson. Mm. So it has its place that it encourages the industry and pushes the industry on. But I totally agree with you, Dave. I mean, not against clones, but don't copy the things that are unnecessary to copy and don't use the same name. You talk about Dyson, Chris. I'm, mm. uh, I think I'm right in saying, isn't that the company that took most of the manufacturing away from Wiltshire to some country abroad? I believe they have um, <coughs> a manufacturing unit in Scandinavia. I'm not sure, mind. But they also have quite a lot of um, employees in the UK and they've got a lot of engineers now that work under the Dyson label. Right, um, I, I thought they just kept their design in this country, but I may be wrong. I mean, their design engineer is a, ob obviously based here, but I mean, there was quite a fuss about it. The uh, service, all I can say to you is the service that you get has to be second to none. 
which I didn't expect that. I mean, come on, I couldn't remember where I bought it, when yeah. I bought it. You know, and they do offer this service, which is amazing, that if you have a Dyson machine, no matter how old it is, you can ring Dyson and for a set price, their engineer comes out. Yes, you yes. Know, and will make it as good as new. Wouldn't it be nice if that was the case with uh, uh, all yes. original <coughs> gear, with A6s? But it can nice. happen. And it can and should. That's the point I'm trying to make, that the Chinese have done us a favour in a way, um, because the industry is moving on so much quicker, because there is that incentive to move it on. Absolutely right, and that, that incentive is slowly being eaten away at, but that's really a topic. And we're out of time night. again. I've noticed. I mean, in a sense, the Chinese are having their industrial revolution, aren't they? They, really? they, they, they are, yes. Are you saying they're revolting, Keith? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. You've got to admire them in many respects, haven't you? And Whip It Up 69 has just posed the question, Dyson equals European version of the VIP 2000, the legal hey. VIP 2000, oh. that's probably right. Um, and Very <laughs> Boring has said he's surprised you don't have a Kirby cut. I had a Kirby. So did I, they were crap. Oh, Christ, if you could shift that, it would do your muscles good. I'm sure that's why I've got well, problems. Well, I remember we had a Dyson that we got rid of, because if you carry it up the stairs, you got a hernia. But that's uh, by the by. <laughs> Doesn't she, live, uh, doesn't she live three doors down? Uh, hernia. Hernia, hernia uh, Johnson, uh, isn't uh, it? Is it? I don't know if started another story about Dyson, but this is not Dyson no. free advertising. No, it's, no, no. it's definitely not. It's not, it's not, it's not. And Brutalness has said that Totally Wicked on the Odysseys have a five-year warranty. <coughs> they do. It's perfectly true. Um, but that has brought us, right, hurtling, screaming and kicking to the end of the show. Um, again. again, yeah, I, I'm... Sorry if we put the cat amongst the pigeons. I just felt I needed to, to open my mouth about the Clone Wars because it, it, it does me nappering. But never mind, such is life. That is the way these things go. It's been a great pleasure to share an hour with you two and everybody out there watching as well. It's been fabulous. It's been a cracking end, in fact, to a really cracking week and weekend. Always passes weekend. quickly. It does, it flies by. Don't forget tomorrow night, well, don't forget straight after this to tune into RY4 Radio where there'll be all kinds of RY4 Radio going on. It's Ro is it Rob tonight or is that Tuesday? That's Tuesday. Yeah, but RY4 Radio is on tomorrow night at 10 o'clock after Mark Will Van Basten is on at 9 or 9.30 or beyond. And then our German language program DE Talk is on as well tomorrow on Wednesday night. Team Talk again. Team Talk. Because Gary's still busy. And then followed by RY4 Radio. Then on Thursday, it's VT Talk followed by RY4 Radio. And I'm not mentioning people that are on it. You'll just have to tune in and find out. And then Friday and Saturday night, RY4 Radio is on. And then Sunday night, Dave Kitson takes to the airwaves with Dave's tackle box yet again, and that'll bring us all the way back round to Monday again. It's been a great pleasure to share the last hour with you. I hope you've enjoyed it half as much as we have. I know we've gobbed off about all kinds. <laughs> Apparently, you and me are like old women. Really? Yeah. Oh. Talk like fisher wives. Aye. Well, we'll talk about well, that after yes. the show. But until we see you next time, be good to one, one another and vape on. Vip hard and don't let the bastards grind you down. Till next time from all of us here. JD bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.